You're looking at a daily chart of the S&P 500, and this is my daily review, and my disclaimer is, um, do your own due diligence. This video is made for adults. Don't be a kid. What else? If I told you to jump off a bridge, would you? Which was my dad's favorite line. <laughs> anyway, this index is going nowhere and has gone nowhere for a long, 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 long time. You know, when it gets up to 42, people get, you know, all excited, you know, and no bull market. And then when it comes down to, you know, 38, you know, it's the end of the world. The macro folks come in and say, oh, you know, doom and gloom recession is coming. Inverted yield curve. Well, it's all a bunch of garbage. When it gets up to 42, that's probably time to unload. When it goes down to 38, it's probably time to buy. Until this trend breaks, this thing's doing absolutely nothing. But I do like the market. You know, kind of like the market. It's okay. It's not horrible. It stopped going down. If the shorts were so almighty and all powerful, why aren't they pushing this thing lower? You know, I guess this guy from uh, Morgan Stanley Wilson says it's going to go uh, to 3,000 here <laughs> uh, this year because, you know, the economy is going to fall apart. And he's really sticking to his guns, but uh, I don't see it. You know, bring it on because if they can't bring it lower here in the next few months, you know, it's going to start trading on next year's numbers and the comps are going to be so darn easy. It's going to be ridiculous. Let's take a look at the monthly. It's the end of the month, February. Let me see. It was down 2.62% this month. My goodness, the end of the world. But in January, it was up, I don't know, 5 or 6%. Yeah, so it's a wash, 6.18%. And so for 2023, the S&P 500 is up 3.39%, which is not bad. We'll take it. NASDAQ, same thing, was down 1.1%. But last month, it was up 10.68%. Uh, so it's up 9.45% in 2023. And we will take that. The NASDAQ is the leading index. It, it too, is in a trade range. Uh, it is above its 200 simple moving average, yay. But it, but it's been in this trade range as well. If you just take a look at the, you know, just right here where it is, like eleven thousand, um, just above eleven thousand. This right here is, come on, right where it's been for since uh, when was that? Last last May, it was down eleven thousand. So yeah, it's just above there, eleven four fifty five. So it's in a trade range between ten and twelve, you know. And once again, to me, this looks like a bottoming pattern. Um, if you go back a little bit, it was 16,212 and it made this low down 37%, peaked to trough, and it just stopped going lower. It had a little retest here in December and had the January rally, but you know, why can't the shorts push this thing any lower? You know, uh, it's just uh, they have to do it pretty soon because, like I say, next year they're going to be trading on, uh, I mean, uh, pretty soon they're going to be trading on next year's numbers, and uh, it's going to be um, super easy comps. Yes, you can see today was a higher volume, last day of the month. We'll see what March has for uh, in store for the index. But you got to figure that the you know, the market, they, it knows that there's going to be you know higher interest rates, higher for longer. We've heard all this for months and months. So there's nothing really surprising. The um, earnings reports have not been good, and they can't push them down on you know pretty, pretty crummy uh, earnings reports and lowered forward guidance. Many of the CEOs are saying, you know, they expect the consumer to slow down in the back half of uh, 2023. But anyway, let's get to the oil and gas pipeline stocks because they're making new highs. And, you know, <laughs> stocks making new highs. You look at the new high list every day and it's the same stocks, you know, week after week. You know, they keep showing up there. And this is one of them. It was on our watch list at MC Stock Charts. This thing just uh, pulled back to the 10 is just hammering higher. They had earnings reports. Another stock that I own had earnings reports. I didn't even know it was uh, TDW. That's when you know you own too many stocks or <laughs> you don't have a big enough position to so it really matters. But this bounced off. It's uh, 21. Another theme that we have. Stocks pulling back to the 21. Uh, finding support and ripping higher. This one was up you know, nearly 8% today and made another high. This is Tidewater, by the way. These, these are all uh, oil and gas uh, field services or pipeline stocks. This is uh, Torm, and this is uh, was on our watch list as well, and you can see why. We came back to the 10, a little shakeout, then the uh, breakout. This one uh, made a new high today, and then just pulled back into the close. NAT, yeah, low price stock, but it's making new highs, um, so we like new highs. 
We like stocks that are going up. We don't like stocks that are going down. We keep it simple. Uh, this was, um, oh, Frontline, yeah, FRO, another new high today. I mean, these things are all just making new highs. And what can you say? I mean, you don't have to be very smart. You don't have to know anything about stocks. This is a new high, and it keeps showing up on the new high list. So, um, like I said, not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy anything, but I'm just pointing out. The market can't be that bad if all these stocks are making new highs. This one pulled back to the 10 EMA and just blasted higher last up. Uh, you know, four days. Got to, anyway. I'm gonna I'm gonna get off the oil and gas stocks and the new high bit, but um, it is true. <laughs> Here's Elf. Another Elf made a new high today. Pull, pull back to the ten. You know, uh, a little mini consolidation here. Then made a new high today. Um, I'm gonna actually have one day of retail without showing Crocs. And uh, this is Ulta Beauty. I talk about how these stocks have been finding support at the 21. This one pulled back to the 21, got support and pulled back again today. So we'll see what happens with Ulta Beauty. They have earnings coming up on the 9th, which is next week. And Wing, that was another one that, uh, uh, what did it do? Oh, it came back and pulled back. So that's what I like here. It pulled back. Uh, it actually tried to break out after earnings and then pull back nicely. So I kind of like this. And lighter volume, pull back to a moving average. Mm, keep your eye on that one. And I'm going to get out of retail. Uh, and I'm going to go to the semiconductors because here we go again. These same stocks making new highs, you know, pull back to a moving average and then just blast it higher. So, you know, if, if you missed out on this uh, base, the breakout from the base, you know, maybe that's an area of interest for you if you can uh, catch them at the moving averages. Uh, this is... Uh, Allegro Microsystems, same thing, broke out, you know, just ran away, got extended and just formed a little shelf here and then uh, bounced off its uh, 10 EMA again, um, AEHR. They had a secondary offering, handled it pretty well, pulled down to the 21, up 4% today. So we like the nice bounces off of um, moving averages. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the semiconductors. I go over them every day and you know the ones uh, that are doing well. And ones that I like, I am going to go to the biotech stock. So because Sarepta had good news today after hours, it's up like 15%. There will be no ad com for their drug. So they uh, assume that FDA approval. So that is a good news for uh, uh, Sarepta Therapeutics. And it's responding in after hours. I don't even know what their earnings report was, if they beat or guided, you know, a new drug is going to uh, uh, propel a stock like that. Um, TGTX, I did want to mention this one because they reported earnings today. Earnings, <laughs> loosely termed earnings. They have a new drug. And so people are just, investors are interested in how the new drug is being uh, launched and if insurance is going to cover it and, you know, how widespread is it. And uh, it, it sold off this morning and it went down to its 10-week line. If you look at the weekly chart and then uh, found support there, you know, it really sold off, you know, quite a bit. And then uh, gapped, uh, didn't gap, it traded higher up to these moving averages and just fell in between at, uh, you know, middle of the range of the uh, daily range today, just kind of flat on this session, which is good news because you would think if investors don't want to be part of this story, they would just get out after an earnings report like that. But as they launch this new drug, the earnings will improve. And that should be a decent stock for this year. I did want to mention Catalyst because this is one that got hammered on the Teva letter. And it's just kind of traded sideways. They did pre-announce earlier that their new drug that they bought was going to do like 250 million and their existing drug was doing over 250. So, you know, it's 500 million um, in revenues, you know, which is not bad, you know, for a 1.5 uh, billion market cap. So I would think if the FDA supports them in their uh, litigation battle, I would think this thing would be back above 20, but uh, we'll see that who wants to get involved with the litigation. That's, time consuming into opportunity cost. Uh, Novo Nordis pulled back to its 50. This is the Wegovy Ozempa uh, drug, weight loss drug. And, you know, it's just kind of forming this flat base here, pulled back to its 21 a couple of times and found support. I don't know why it wouldn't be any different this time, but I like this uh, little consolidation pattern setting up in that Novo Nordis. And anyway, I'm just going to go through a couple of random stocks. I'm not going to have any theme for any um, 
industry group or anything like that. I'm just going to point out some stocks that I like that are doing well. Uh, Four went down on this uh, week earnings report from TOST. I thought it was taking market share. I posted that at MC Stock Charts. And today it proved to be true. Uh, they reported uh, strong earnings. They're up 13% on 344% above average daily volume. And that is not to be ignored, Dan. TMDX, another one not to be ignored. This one blasted higher after earnings last week and uh, made another new high today. You could see a 20% move with massive volume. And so this one is getting a lot of interest and a lot of love. And that continues to make new highs. It's on that new high list. A -O -A -X -O -N, they reported after the bell today. A beat and raise quarter. It's up to 207. So it'll make a new high tomorrow uh, at the open, uh, you know, provided that, uh, you know, everything goes well in the conference call and everything. NRDS, another uh, financial services stock making new highs. Uh, this is just a theme, new high after new high. And so all these stocks making new highs cannot be a bad thing. This is Builder's first source. It did make a new high today. But if you look at the weekly chart, if I can get it to cooperate, nice consolidation pattern. Yeah, it did make a new high, but I'm looking for this one to flatten out and maybe provide us an opportunity. It's a little extended here at 4.4% uh, above its 10 EMA, but stocks making new highs we like. Bolero made a new high, then pulled back into the close. Just finished flat on the session today. But once again, another stock uh, making new highs. Booking, uh, this one looks good. You got to look at the weekly on this. Big consolidation pattern. Um, and um, did make a new high today. Uh, but looks like it's setting up in a base. And I kind of like this one. The anti-wrinkle cream the botox competition the botox killer the revamps made a new high at 3661 and pulled back today kind of some strange action today last day of the month and uh some strange action around earnings reports recently and then there's terex machinery uh, uh construction mining stock making a new high today and this one's just grinding higher and being supported by its moving average anyway that's it for today uh, a lot of uh, stocks making new hives, that cannot be a bad thing, and we never give up.